So the next video is on uh, 2014 set one paper. There were around six problems again in this question paper on structures. I've chosen the more complicated problems here. So the very first problem was of uh, one mark only, and it was asked to find out the static indeterminacy of this problem. Now, if you see this, it looks like a complicated problem having a cable over here and uh, being in uh, two dimensional in vertical and horizontal plane, but it's actually a very simple problem. What you do is you apply the same concept of DSC plus TSI. The static indeterminacy will be external indeterminacy and internal indeterminacy. Now, what is the external indeterminacy in this case? The external indeterminacy will be equal to the total number of reactions, which are three at P end and two on the other end. Now, if you have three reactions here and two reactions here, how many equilibrium equations you have? Uh, if you consider this problem, because 3 plus 2 and minus 3 will be the equilibrium equation and here there is an internal hinge. This is an internal hinge. Now internal hinge has 1 degree uh, additional equation being provided by the system. So in that case, we can simply, uh, let me just check the problem one more time. So uh, I am sorry, here it is a hinge. The problem is here it has a hinge. Now in that case it will be 2 here and 2 here and minus will be the equilibrium equation and because of this internal hinge again the summation of moment above this point will be 0 so minus 1. So your external indeterminacy comes out to be 0. What about the internal indeterminacy? Is there any uh, concept of internal indeterminacy in case of uh, open open structures? No, it only occurs when there is a closed loop. So is there any closed loop here? No. So your internal indeterminacy becomes 0. So what is your answer to this question is 0. The static indeterminacy of this problem is 0 and it can be easily analyzed just by the equilibrium equation without use of any additional compatibility condition. So that was the problem number 1. The second problem, in this the force in the member QR is asked. Now, it's a simple problem. The only difference is that they have given you in terms of coordinates. So if this is 1, 0, this is 3, 0, what is this distance? 2 meter. And if this is 1, 0 and this is 0, 4, what is this distance? 4 meter. Right? The rest of the things becomes very simple and uh, if, you, if you take the summation of moment of all the forces, all the forces about Q as 0, you have RR into 2 and you see this is 1, 0, this is 0. So what will be the distance between the force and this support? 1 meter. Right? So your value is, here it is anti-clock and this also goes anti-clock, so plus 80 into 1 meter is equal to 0. So I get here as minus 40, right? So RR is minus 40. So I'll just put a downward sign and I'll say 40 kN here. If this is 40 and this is 40, again here it should, you see here this is 80 and this is 40. So you have RQ as RQ plus RR as 80. Your RR is actually minus 40. So 80 plus 40 becomes 120. So your, this force will become 120 here. So that is the uh, general summation of vertical forces remains 80. Now, once after calculating the reaction, your question asked was to find the force in the member QR. Just it's an easy one then. You consider the equilibrium of, suppose I consider the equilibrium of R joint. I have forces like this. This going 40 downwards. I consider this to be compression. So F P R and this to be tension. So F Q R. So you need this angle. How do you find this angle? The sum of the angle should be 180 degree. So I can say this angle is 180 minus 104 plus 22.8. So what is the angle there? 180 minus 104 plus 22.8. This gives you 53.2. So this is 53.2. So first you need FPQ. You cannot find FQR until unless you know FPQ. So I can write FPR sine 53.2 equal to. So I'll take this as just for my convenience. I'm taking changing the sign here so that I don't have to take a negative value there. FPS sin 53 will be equal to 40. So 40 divided by sin 53.2 gives me FPR 
as 49.95 kilonewton and then this is 49.95 into cos 53.2 is equal to FQR so into cos 53.13 is to 29.97 kilonewton now since this was a fill in the blank question uh, since this was an option question the option given was 30 kilonewton compressive and also question uh, option was 30 kilonewton tension so what is the correct answer here you have almost answer as 30 kilonewton and sign is towards the joint if you refer to the window lectures if the arrow is towards the joint it is compression so your answer is 30 kilonewton compression so this was the second problem the next problem was again on trusses but this time it was a uh, 2 marks problem so if it is a 2 marks problem you expect it to be a bit more complicated in this it was given that QR this concept was not introduced in the video series but I am telling it here in detail of this problem in, in, in reference to this problem so this in this truss it was given that the PQ member is short by 3 mm now what is this sh too short too long is actually when you when you uh, see some, some members being transported to the side and uh, there may be one or two mm difference in the fitting location and the member size then these members are they are tensioned and then tightened to the exact location so that way they are lengthened by 2 mm similarly there can, can be cases while transporting the member got elongated and now it's not exactly fitting over the location in that case you have to compress the member and then insert it on the location in that case the member becomes short by 3 mm so here short by 3 mm is it's 3 mm less so you have to elongate it so keep in mind the meaning okay short by 3 mm means you have to there is a difference of 3 mm in which now you have to elongate or you have to stretch the member so now if this is stretching by 3 mm he is asking what is the vertical so delta rb what is the vertical deflection of r so that is the question i will just erase this question first now to solve this problem again the concept of uh, unit load method is used in the unit load method i have told you that whenever the deflection has to be known at a particular location there should be a unit load acting right so I apply a unit load here 1 kilo newton if I apply a unit load here what is this reaction 1 by 2 what is this reaction 1 by 2 now what is the deflection formula we have derived in the video lectures it is pkl over ae right if this is pkl over ae can I also write it as K into PL over A. What is K? K is the forces in the member due to unit load. What is PL over A? It is nothing but the deflection of the member, right? So if I can just find the forces in the member due to unit load and the deflection on the member due to external load, multiplying that will give me the deflection under this joint R. Now, what is so? Uh, let me just quickly find the reaction, uh, the forces in the member. So this is 8 meter total if you see and I can just write it 4 meter, 4 meter so that it do not create confusion and this is 4 meter right? No, it's 3 meter. So what is your angle here? It's 10 inverse 3 by 4 which is 36.8 36.8 So 36.86 Here the reaction is 1 by 2 I take this as compression and this as tension so I can write this is P Q R F P R. So F P R sine thirty six point eight six is equal to one by two. So zero point five divided by sine thirty six point eight six gives you point eight three. So F P R is equal to zero point eight three three. And if I take cos, I'll just you you FPR that is 0.833 cos 36.86 should be equal to FPQ. This is your FPQ. Then 0.833 into cos 36.86 gives you 0.66. FPQ is 0.66. Now if you see here, I can directly write the deflection at R is equal to force in PQ due to unit load 
due to unit load that is k multiplied by the deflection of pq right plus force in the member pr multiplied by deflection of pr plus force in the member pq into deflection of pq but actually what is the deflection in pr given there is no deflection given at pr so this becomes zero what is the deflection in pq given it's zero the only parameter i have is force in the member pq due to unit load multiplied by the deflection of pq what is the force in the member pq just now we have calculated it is 0.66 what is the deflection of PQ? It's 3 mm. So 0.66 multiplied by 3 gives you a value of 2 mm. So 2 mm is your deflection of the joint R. So that is the solution to this problem. Now, last problem is again a simple one. It was just asked that if you, if you refer to my influence line diagram, the shear force at any section D is like this. And this ordinate is a sorry, this ordinate is a by l and this is b by l. So this is saying this is l by l by 4 and this is 3 by 3 l by 4, right? So he's saying possible IFD for the simply supported beam shear force at D located at L by 4 from left support. So L by 4 from left support, this will be A by L. Here A is L by 4. So what will be this value here? It will be L by 4 upon L. So L gets cancelled, your value is 0.25. And this value will be 0.75. So the option number B is correct in this case. So this completes the 2014 set 1 problem. The next video we will see 2014 set 2 problems on structures.